So as you guys know, I'm a massive supporter of emulation. I love it. I think it's an important part of video games, especially when it comes to preservation. We've seen a lot of companies embrace emulation in recent times and offer up collections of older games on systems like the Nintendo Switch, for example. And I think generally speaking, emulation is starting to get a lot more embraced and accepted as a normal part of video games these days. Back in the old days, emulation was considered a bit of a dark art and there was a lot of, I guess, connotations with piracy and illegal ROMs and whatnot. But I think these days, emulation is a kind of a common practice. A lot of people use them. And that also includes current generation emulators that can load and play commercial games. And I think as long as research and work is being done, and that work is completely clean room, then I always think there's going to be people that want to research and build an emulation engine no matter what the target hardware is. Now with that said, the Nintendo Switch has two emulators that are currently out that can play commercial games. They are Yuzu and Ryo Jinx or Ryu Jinx. These emulators began live just after the Nintendo Switch was released back in 2017. And fast forward to today, both of them can play commercial games. In fact, both of them have been playing commercial games probably for the last 18 months or so. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why is the Nintendo Switch so easy to emulate when you've got things like the original Xbox, the PlayStation 3, the PS4, stuff like this that haven't really have the level of compatibility as the Nintendo Switch with these two emulators. And it's simply because the hardware is based off off-the-shelf parts. It's an ARM-based console, which means that there's a lot of data sheets and information out there. For example, the NVIDIA Tegra X1 runs 64-bit ARM. There's compilers out there that already exist for it. Its graphics API obviously is NVIDIA-based as well, and that is NVN. That has been reverse engineered. So overall, it's a more traditional emulator than something like you know rc ps3 or the semu emulator for the wii u both ryu jinx and yuzu were able to get homebrew up and running pretty quickly after the launch of the system now now i personally have used both yuzu and ryu jinx in the past for homebrew projects in fact i ported doom mame 0.72 and postal to the switch with just ryu jinx and a homebrew sdk and these emulators are very, very good at what they do, not only to play Switch ROMs, but they are a very useful tool for Switch development. But sometimes emulation developers push the boundary of what is considered an acceptable practice and draw attention to themselves and their work. Emulating the Nintendo Switch on a PC is something that Nintendo clearly isn't thrilled about yet. Due to existing case law surrounding emulation, there's not much they can do about it as long as the emulation code is all above board. But that almost changed today when Yuzu announced that they would be offering online support for the emulator by using Raptor Network. Essentially, think of this as a replacement for the Nintendo Switch Online that emulates all the features of Nintendo Switch Online but routes network traffic through their private servers. The Yuzu team announced right now Raptor Network only supports two games, Super Mario Maker 2 and Mario Odyssey. In Super Mario Maker 2, you can upload and share custom levels with others, while in Super Mario Odyssey, you can play hide-and-go-seek in Luigi's Balloon World and share high scores in minigames on the leaderboards. Reverse engineering new games is an arduous task, but the service is in continuous development, so keep your eyes peeled for future updates. Raptor Network also allows you to set a nickname and a profile image, which is used to identify you in games. In addition to this, it allows you to find other people on the internet. You can interact with your friends in supported games, such as viewing courses made by them in Super Mario Maker 2. The user team also disclosed that they would lock this network access to Raptor Networks behind their Patreon subscriptions starting at $5 a month. So effectively, you're paying $5 a month at least to get access to their online service. Now, just think about it for a second. The Nintendo Switch Online is $4 a month. So you're paying a price to get access to their network. Now, as you can imagine, this left a lot of users of Yuzu, no pun intended, pretty annoyed, unhappy, and just kind of confused why they were doing this. And honestly, I am a little confused as well. 
Now, the good news is Yuzu decided very quickly to remove the online support indefinitely and effective immediately. So what they did is came out and said pretty much only a few hours after the announcement, they said, we apologize to our community for the confusion and development surrounding the release and especially to those who were excited to try this feature. We have received valid and insightful feedback from our fans and members of the broader Switch community and emulation communities. Truthfully, we are just a bunch of enthusiastic people from around the globe who are generally excited about something we thought we could offer. Now, I'm very happy to see that Yuzu did go back and make this statement because honestly, there are a lot of issues here. Now, the first thing I wanna say is online service for emulation is nothing new. It, there are a lot of emulators out there that handle online service for example there are replacement servers for the wii semu has online capabilities rc ps3 the og xbox is getting a online replacement these are legacy products for servers that no longer exist or no longer have any type of network infrastructure the nintendo switch online is a currently accessible paid service that Nintendo will do anything to protect and any diversion to use an alternative service such as Raptor Networks would make them want to go after the user team and shut down the entire project with a cease and desist. Mario Maker 2 and Mario Odyssey doesn't seem like a big deal to start with but what happens when Smash Brothers or Mario Kart 8 gets added and you know eventually it will and worse, what if those games ran better than Nintendo's infrastructure? Nintendo clearly has a problem with this and I do think the user team made the right choice. Now, whatever your feelings about charging for this service aside, I do think that, you know, for me, having an online server on a current emulator that has a current system and current network infrastructure that's still actively being used day in, day out, is just a giant red flag and I do I do applaud the user team for taking a step back looking at everything and deciding to basically not offer it anymore I think it was definitely the right choice but let me know what you guys think about this news story in the comments below I think it's an interesting one and interesting to see that emulation continues to push boundaries or try to push boundaries into new areas and I, and I think this is definitely an interesting story but I want to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments below what do you think about the user team offering an alternative network to play Nintendo Switch online games on? And what do you think about the response that they came out with and ultimately the decision to not go ahead with it? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Guys, if you like this episode, give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.